see if I can articulate this well. Um, especially because mental health is becoming, uh, you know, people are more apt to talk about it now and all that kind of stuff. I feel, and I'm, I'm interested to see how, what you guys think. I think that Hollywood has done us, the veteran community, a disservice in the way yes. that they have portrayed God, yeah, um yes. whether it's whether it's PTSD whether it's I don't I don't even want to say it's PTSD it's the way that it has portrayed veterans just that have gone to Afghanistan Iraq you know the desert one or you know Iraq one whatever you want to call it Vietnam that is come back and you are you are a, a broken person that can't function and you're all kinds of fucked up and like yeah whatever you know you're just you're just this booger that we got a freaking flick right and i i'm interested to see what you think about that did he if like am i am i off base here no you're on I, wa- I watch it. him and i'm like what, yeah. what is this i see it all the freaking time i don't know if i can cuss so i, I try yeah, to you can do whatever you want you've been doing it already yeah, and yeah, i just see. i just dropped an f-bomb so whatever <laughs> no, if a I tree falls the in the forest time. and no one's there to hear it does it matter <laughs> <laughs> so it's so irritating, but again, I got to take a step back and realize we've sold it to this individual. Mm-hmm. I meet an individual and I can identify him. I can paint him, describe him to you right now. The grunt style t-shirt, the high and tight, the beer belly from eating and drinking too much. Rigger's belt and the jeans, baby. Let's go. The, exactly. And at first, at first, I used to fucking dog on that person. I used to sit to him and be like, what the fuck is wrong with you? You're outside now. <laughs> right. You're on the other side. But you know why they do it? For the brotherhood. Yeah, for sure. Because if they're wearing that t-shirt, somebody else sees them. And if they carry that identity, somebody else would see that and recognize it. And hey, they have something they can talk about. Hey, battle buddy. And I, I hate hey, it. Hey, brother. It, it's... Yes, it's bad, but I try to be compassionate. I try to understand that somebody sold him that identity. They packaged it, handed it to him when he transitioned out. And now people engage with him, and there's some sympathy. And now people engage with him, and they say, oh, you know, that's just old Bill. He's just grumpy. Like, yeah, I'm a disgruntled veteran. Look at me, disgruntled veteran. No, you're Bill. You're Steven. You're David. You're a good fucking human being. You're a good former fucking infantry, calf scout, fucking loadmaster, whatever you were. You are not your PTSD. You are not your traumatic event. But the Hollywood idea that a veteran is broken without, and the only thing that's worthy of us is that lived experience. Yeah. That's what they sell. The only thing that was worthy about you, the only thing that was good about you is what you did in Iraq and Afghanistan. And we're we're gonna salute you. We're gonna thank you. We're gonna say thank God bless you. Fuck you. No, I'm better than that. And so are you. Everybody out there. If if you if you if you have that grunt style t shirt and you have you wear the boots and the rigor belt, I'm not trying to dog you out. I'm I'm sincerely not. I know that it's a way to still be identifying with the brotherhood that you fought so valiantly and so fucking hard to be a part of. But there's a better community out there. There's a better fucking tribe out there. It's your community that you live in. It's the brothers that you can make. You have a lot more in common with the person next to you than maybe the veteran that you keep trying to attach yourself to. But we have gotten to this idea where this is how I need to identify because this is my camp. No, that's not. That's a part of you. Grow your fucking hair out. Be willing to not buy the grunt style t-shirt. Buy a regular t-shirt. Yeah. I have a dear friend, a really good friend of mine. Shout out to you, little bird. Fucking Brian. <laughs> Great fucking dude. Everybody's got a fucking Brian, right? <laughs> fucking Air Force, Brian. Uh, security, uh, security forces. And he's very proud of that. Very fucking proud of it. But you know what happened when he got hurt? When he had to go get help? He latched onto that grunt style, to that fucking Molon Lab, fucking <laughs> you name it, because it, it's brother. marketed to them. It's marketed yeah. to people that are hurt. It's yeah. marketed to people that have gone through something, and now they're on the outside. And fuck, they don't have anybody. They have a few friends, but they don't have the same lived experience. 
And what I like to say and what I like to challenge people is do the work. Do the deep internal work to find out who you really are. The, the beret, the, the paratrooper, the service member, that's a fraction of who I am. That's a fraction. I am a husband. I am a fucking peer-to-peer support facilitator. I grow orchids. I love being active. I love being outside. I want to freaking climb mountains again. I want to be able to rehab my feet. So yeah, someday maybe I can run a freaking marathon. Like I'm an avid reader. I'm a person that volunteers. I am a fucking really rad fucking dude. <laughs> but at the, within that, all that shit, maybe there's green brain there. Yeah. But that's not everything. And I'll be damned if somebody tells me, well, you know, you were a green beret. So maybe, maybe what you should do is you should start a defense company or <laughs> start a tactical arms. I'm not that guy. It can be really lucrative to think that you, you have to do that. There are better shooters out there than me. I don't have that passion. I have more of a passion to go fishing than I do to sit on a fucking range and fucking instruct a bunch of boners on how to do fucking basic security <laughs> stuff. Like, you're not going to go out there and defend our nation. So why the fuck do I want to escort you through a fucking fake-ass shoot house now in some fake-ass tactical scenario? No. I don't want to do that. Right. I just want to be me. And that's the best thing we can all do. Yeah. And, and, and I, I know it's, you know, we've, we've picked on a, a couple companies or what, but it, you know, in, in their defense, since they're not here to, you know, say it like, it's kind of like the placebo thing, right? Yeah. It's okay. Maybe. And I'll, I'll just say, you know, drink, obviously. Dr- okay. Drinking this water, right? It, it actually physiologically doesn't do anything for me, right? But if it helps me in some kind of way, whether it's mental or gives me a sense of connection, purpose, community, or whatever, even though physiologically it doesn't do anything for me, but it works, it's not yeah. dumb, right? If it's a placebo, but it works, it's not dumb. So yeah. if, if that's what you need then or, or want, then fine. That's fine. All. All I'm saying, or, or and Denny, I don't want to speak for you, but is is you are more than that. Exactly. Like, there's so much more. There's more depth to you than that. Like, I got it. You identify it. Like, I mean, shit. I got freaking CCT in my freaking, you know, Instagram handle. In, in, yeah, <laughs> I, you know, in in, in my I wasn't email calling address. you out. I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> but, right. So this is what like, hurt sounds like. I want you yeah, to pay attention, so everybody. It. This is this is. This is what internalization no, it, feels it, like. It's, it's just one of those things that it is a vast majority. So, yes, Grunt Style is the big dog out there, and it's easy to to label them as part of the issue because it is so easily accessible. And, I'm, and I know they're trying – I know recently they had a, a podcast episode where they talked about some of the, the things associated with their brand. And, like, they're growing, they're adapting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It it is a it is something that people have used because I've talked to friends that do this. Like, I wear this t shirt. I go to the gym. I'm alone. I'm fucking nervous. I don't want to be there. And then there's I know there's a veteran there, so maybe it'll strike up a conversation. So I totally get that. Yeah. Um, so again, not trying to shit on you if that's you. No. If that's what you wear. <laughs> the the danger just want is you to understand that you're you're more than just your yeah. service. You're yeah. more than just what you used to do. The, the danger is that will. ego and that id wrapping yes. each other up. Like that's, that's yeah. the danger there. Like I, I love this Marcus Luttrell. He, so Marcus Luttrell went in and he talked about, I'm sure you've seen, it's got a, you know, millions of views on YouTube. He was talking to the Alabama football team. He basically went through the lone survivor scenario. Right. And at the yeah. end of it, he did it as a way to tie it in. Like, you know, bonds forged in adversity can't be broken. And, you know, I was there for the team and it was a team speech. Right. He said something that I connected to, you know, way earlier, you know, 10, 15 years ago. And he's like, this just, this wasn't just a job. This is who I am. I connected with that initially and I've evolved almost 180 out from that now. Like yeah. I love being a PJ, being a PJ shaped me. It molded me I, like everything about it has been, you know, the best and worst parts of my life, but it's been, you know, the single most useful thing that has ever happened to me in my entire life. But I'm, I'm Aaron Love, man. I, I'm not going to yeah. be a PJ here soon. Right. And I'm okay with that. Like, I'm going to move on. I'm going to do something else. It's going to be a great part of my life. 
But to wrap my ego up in that, my very person to say that I am a PJ and I, you know, this is what I do and this is forever who I am. I don't know if that's really useful on the way out because then it leads to, oh, well, you're a PJ. You should go teach civilians how to do, yeah. you know, basic trauma medicine or you're a PJ. You like, maybe I don't want to do that. Maybe I do want to go work in a completely, you know, the tech market sales, social media space as, as my next job. Maybe I don't want to do the next job at all. Maybe I just want to go do these other things. And maybe I do talk about being a PJ. Maybe I don't, but I think it's probably on the line of like 80, 20 don't yeah. and, you know, 20 do, uh, in certain scenarios. So, uh, it's just one of those things, you know, as long as you're not wrapping your ego and your id, as long as you're not like wearing that t-shirt as a way, my fa- I saw a t-shirt on the plane the other day that was like, I'm the infidel Allah warned you about. I was like, <laughs> I, I was like, Hey dude, you're okay. 60, you're obese and 60 years old on an airplane. Calm down. This is a Delta flight. My guy, like, I shit you not. <laughs> What flight were you on? Shirt. What date? Because <laughs> I saw something that meets that demographic, that description to a T with the same t shirt when I was flying to San Antonio recently. That's how that, that checks. That checks. No, the, that's a, that's a hub for the infidels that you're like, I always like that one. And then like on the, on his pack, he had a, he had a, a, a patch. It was one of the old ones, but it was like major league door kicker. And yes. it was like an MLB logo, but it was the, yep. the guy behind the rifle hilarious i was like yeah calm down my dude, dude. like it's not that serious <laughs> but 